Okay, good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us uh, on this series looking at Blomloy and teaching with competencies. So my name's Mark Meredith. I'm a member of the professional learning and development team here at uh, Cambridge University Press in Iberia. And this is my colleague, Victoria. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Victoria Peña, and I'm part of the Cambridge Assessment team, and I'm based in Madrid. Excellent. So, like I said, we're going to be looking at Lom Loi this evening, or what we can up to now. So, the plan for this session is to have a look at the key points that we know from Lom Loi. Then we're going to take a few steps at looking at implementing competencies uh, while we're planning, implementing competencies while we're teaching, and then we'll go through a summary. Now, this is the first in a series of webinars. Um, this webinar is going to function like an introduction, if you'd like. Um, what we will do is try to keep you informed along the next weeks and months on other webinars that are coming up. For those of you who are interested, who are attending live, there is a feedback and certificate available. Uh, you'll receive that after the feedback at the end of this session. Wonderful. So. Let's crack on, shall we, Victoria? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what is Lom Loe? Go what on. is Lom Loe, Mark? <laughs> so, the big question, I think it's on a lot of our minds. We're all here for this today. What do we know so far? Well, we know at the top level, at the highest level, Lom Loe is an objective that comes from uh, the European Union, right? We're trying to look at making sure we are reflecting children's interests in the world and putting their rights as an integral part of the education system. And it has some key aspects um, that you've mentioned now that come from the, the European Union to make uh, the, the law in Spain more in line with the European law. So the law reflects the importance of children's interest in the world and put their rights as an integral part of the educational system. It's going to also give an emphasis on uh, driving the gender equality, also developing continuous improvement in schools, helping us personalize learning, putting digital competence into the heart of development, something that has become really relevant over the last um, year. And also, uh, it acknowledges the importance of education as part of our of the sustainable development. Yeah, so there's this is like the top level. These are the overall objectives that are sort of coming through. This is the the big picture, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if we take a step down and we think about what it's more like on our classroom, uh, we're really going to be looking at three different areas that are key competencies, specific competencies, and your basic knowledge or basic understanding. Competencias clave, competencias específicas, and saberes básicos. The way these are structured for our classes, the competencias claves are, and competencias específicas are the sort of the focus of our classes. These are like the philosophies and pedagogy, if you will, behind the classes. And the saberes básicos, these are going to be the more specific things that are going to be decided by the autonomous regions. Mm -hmm. On the note of competencias claves, there have been eight of them outlined for us. These are across all subjects. They're going, we need to encourage these competencias in uh, linguistic communication, STEM, digital competence, as we mentioned before. They're all there, they're all very important for, for the whole of education, as it were. These are kind of informing everything. Exactly, they are going to be uh, covered across all the, all the subjects, right? And then we have the specific competencies, which is what we're going to look at now that are, are specific to, in this case, uh, the foreign language uh, subject, English. Yeah, so you can see on screen there are some familiar sites, <laughs> you know, uh, Comprensión Linguística and Producción Linguística. 
These would be what we refer to for many years as speaking, reading, writing, and listening. That hasn't changed. They're just categorized into comprensión and producción. Mm -hmm. We also have interacción, which is talking about the communication, uh, working together and collaboration and uh, the social side of learning. Mm -hmm. We also have mediation. Yep, we are going to be talking about that because mediation is like a step away from uh, interaction and it involves uh, facilitating communication, helping and supporting it, building bridges so, so our students can, so we can all communicate. And then the final two, plurilinguismo and a competencia cultural, uh, uh, well, cultural competence, if you will, is something we have integrated into language education for, for many, many years, decades even, the touching on different cultures. And by nature, we touch on different cultures when we learn different languages, as, as well as plurilinguismo, something we, we tend to do, whether it's trying to to communicate through translation activities and or if it's understanding and using your second third maybe languages to help learn it's all of those little details when all of this is already in our classrooms really mm -hmm. um, it's just giving it a new shiny like framework to follow just a step further um these four, four of these six competencies, the comprensión, well, competencies one, two, three, and four, uh, where have they come from, Victoria? Yeah, uh, they come from the Common European Framework of Reference, which uh, was published by the Council of Europe in 2001. And uh, they were present there. Um, the Common European Framework uh, recognizes that traditionally, when we are talking about teaching, learning, and assessing languages, we've used the four skills. So speaking, reading, listening, and writing. It acknowledges that. But at the same time, since the companion volume was published in 2018, there has been a a renewed emphasis on the modes of communication, which were present in the Common European Framework and are now um, giving a, a new emphasis, if you want. So we've got reception, uh, listening and reading, production, speaking and writing, then interaction, which covers um, listening and speaking or reading and writing. And then we've got mediation, which is what we mentioned just before, like facilitating the communication and trying to, to help and support uh, communication and build bridges whenever there is a communication breakdown. Yeah, so throughout this session today, what we're going to try and do is have a look at the competencies in general, look at different ways of implementing in the classroom. Um, specifically mediation, because it's kind of a, a new topic to a lot of uh, different teachers who maybe haven't touched upon it before in class, although I guarantee you, you have, because have. It's, <laughs> it's everywhere, right? Um, the, we've actually got two webinars coming up, uh, one at the end of this month and one which will be in the new year, specifically looking at what is mediation. Okay, so we won't touch upon that so much today specifically, but that we've got the whole, uh, whole two webinars there for you with activity ideas and suggestions in the background. Mm -hmm. So we've seen that reception, interaction and production and mediation are integrated into the new uh, specific competencies. Okay, we have the Comprensión Linguística, uh, as Victoria said, speaking, uh, sorry, listening and reading. Competencia dos, which is production, which is the producción or production, and then the interaction there as well, and mediation on the other side. So although it may seem very new, the ideas and the teaching are, have been integrated in, in yeah. our, our, our education system for a long time now. Um, it's just sort of trying to it's nothing it. new <laughs> it's nothing new it's just how we are talking about it now so nothing new we've been doing it uh, for a long time <laughs> so on that note these this uh, Lomlo with Cambridge uh, series 
Okay, the Lomlo Ready series, we're going to be looking at the competencies. As I'm sure many of you are aware, if you are currently using our courses or if you um, have been to any of our webinars before, we are um, very much uh, focused on competence based learning. We, we've got loads of experience, and all of our courses are informed by it. So we're kind of trying to show here today how you guys are already dealing with competencies. Uh, as far as Sabbath is Basicos, for the moment, we won't be looking at those specifically until a bit further down the line when, when there's a bit more clarity on them. So when we say competences, what is competences in learning materials? Well, we're already teaching many aspects of the life competencies. Uh, for example, if we do speaking, we're already looking at communication and collaboration. And if when we're doing reading, we're likely to be doing things such as critical thinking. And here at Cambridge, we have a, a framework based around uh, competencies. Um, some of you may be familiar with this. Uh, what it does is it provides us with a map of six main competencies that offer insights into the type of skills that learners need to be developing. Okay, these, these six competencies are informed by three foundation layers, which are emotional development, digital literacy, and discipline knowledge. And this is connected. We are going to see, right, Mark, that this is connected to the competencies that come with LOMLOI. Absolutely. So you can see here, like, uh, this is just a introductory comparison, if you will, but all of the competencies that we have seen uh, with LOMLOI are already present in the framework and often in multiple sections. And that's something you're going to start to see throughout this webinar is that when we're talking about competencies, we very rarely talk about one competence. It's more often than not everything ble bleeds into each other. It's, it's, a blended, um, it's a blended experience, I suppose is the easiest way to say it because you, you're mixing them up more often than not. You can't really do collaboration without communication and you, creative thinking is often linked to learning to learn and critical thinking. It, there's a lot of crossover. So really what we're going to be doing throughout this session is sort of trying to address these competencies and showing you some of the different features. I think the bigger question there is why competencies. Yes. Why? <laughs> why are we talking about that, Mark? Yeah, so competencies tend to um, have, have come to the front of education quite recently, especially in language learning, because they are inseparable from it. They're inseparable from language learning and language skills. You, to, to be able to communicate effectively in a foreign language, we need to be able to we need to have the skills in these competencies. And we need to be able to apply them, right? Um, for, to communicate. Exactly, it's all about that. They're, they're, like I said in the previous slide, it's all mixed in together. It's all one sort of experience, I suppose. On that note, it's also something that employers have been looking for and are going to be looking for more in the future. Uh, there are, many different reasons, uh, some of them popping up on screen now, that require a variety of different competencies. For example, working in teams or communicating with people outside your organization, the ability to create and edit and write reports. These are all different areas that the future generation is gonna have to come to work with. And ever more important is digital at the center of that as well. Mm -hmm. So in summary, competencies, what are they? Well, they're inseparable from language skills. They're inseparable from each other. Exactly, from each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the final one, Victoria? They are essential to students' future success. So we're going to see how important they, they are because they are enabling students to, to succeed. So the plan then for the remainder of this session um, is to plan selectively, okay? We're going to think about how our planning, how we can structure a lesson. We're going we are going to be looking at opportunities to focus on competencies. They are there, we've been working on them, but 
we, we need to identify these opportunities, Mark? Yeah, we need to look at adapting tasks. So a lot of the time, uh, competence is there. Maybe we need to adapt them or think about the activity in a slightly different way. Um, we're going to look at some suggestions here or maybe raising awareness of our own awareness, first of all. Mm. We are also going to be looking at how we can scaffold, how we can support learning and, and try to help our students as much as possible. And finally, uh, we'll look at how we can build in reflection and self-assessment. Now, the, that final point is related to formative assessment, really, and how we can help our learners develop the skills to, to um, evaluate formatively, which is also something that we're going to be need to be doing. Uh, it's a very big part of um, the law change. And on that note, we'll also have a webinar um, in the new year dedicated to formative evaluation. Um, we'll try to share as much information as we can on, on techniques and ideas and strategies that we can use and resources potentially that, that are there for us. Okay, so if, before we continue, please do uh, participate in the chat box. You know how this works. Uh, any questions, do pop them in. We'll keep an eye on it and we'll try to address them as we go through. So part one, what are we doing first of all, Victoria? We're going to be looking at how we can implement the, the competencies when planning. So what does this mean? So it means that we, we are going to be planning selectively noticing the, the existing opportunities to introduce the, the competencies and more than anything to be aware that we are uh, uh, of the fact that we are really um, working on these competencies and making our students aware of that as well and then adapt tasks when necessary. Mark, have you traveled quite a lot over the last year? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot. I mean, I wish I traveled to London recently. <laughs> Virtually. <laughs> Please forgive the cliche here, right? Um, but when we think about our lessons and our classes, you know, would you travel somewhere without planning ahead where to stay? No, would you go and think about which sites to visit or just some sites, or would you prioritize the time accordingly? Now, when we're thinking about planning with competencies, it's really, really valuable to take the time to plan ahead, you know, to think about which sites you're going to stop at, and also to think about how much time you have to deal with them in class. And then if, right? If we jump ahead, what we do know is that we have eight sites, right, Victoria? Yeah, we have eight sites and we need to visit them throughout the year at different uh, points. So in some cases, it is possible to visit some of them at the same time. And it makes sense because, as you mentioned before, Mark, they are inseparable in some cases. Um, so really it makes sense. And we really need to remember as well that we don't have to do them all at once, okay, or on the same day. Whenever uh, we feel it's convenient to combine some of them, fine, but we don't need to worry about covering all of them every day. Yeah, and more to that point as well, it's not about uh, evaluating them all at the same value at the same time. Mm. You know, we can mix it up, for example. I love this metaphor as well, the mixing desk. You know, like if we are, for example, doing a project, there may be entrepreneurship and cultural awareness in that project. Well, we can turn the volume up on those and turn down the volume on collaboration or creative thinking and just focus on the entrepreneurship or cultural awareness or the same. Should we be doing a clear lesson? Well, maybe we have high content, so we might want to turn the volume down on the linguistic competence and focus purely on the learning to learn side of things. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and maybe a lesson at the end of the, of the unit where may have an equal balance of four or more competencies because you are reviewing what you have already covered. So it makes sense to, to have them all here. Yeah, so it's it's trying to think about our lessons in a slightly different way. Um, yes, we have our content and our language and we need to do our lessons and we have a curriculum to follow. Right. But we also are going to be sort of focusing a bit more now on competence based learning and looking at competences as a fundamental part of a child's development. Um, and to that note, how can we then think about adapting coursebook tasks? OK, so. The great thing about competencies is they help us decide as well. They, we, they help us understand a bit more um, the different ways that we can think about the class and the activities we're doing. I think they are going to add a more practical, maybe notes to our classes, maybe. Absolutely. They, they, they certainly, like, from, from my, my experience in the classroom, when you focus on language you get very much stuck in in the the nitty-gritty of the language don't you but if you think of it from the slightly other side like a collaborative approach for example your options and your ideas open up to be able to do so many more different things with our learners and the great thing is now we're going the children are going to be uh, rewarded for participating and developing these competencies and, and it's something that we can start to help them develop as well and, and be pretty confident that it's going to support them in the future. Definitely. So what do we have here, uh, Mark? We have a couple of activities from different course books. Yeah, so on the screen, you can see a couple of examples of very classic uh, classroom activities uh, from a couple of a couple of course books. What we would like you to do is in the chat box, if you would like to share with us uh, what competencies you think can be covered or practiced or worked on in these activities. We'll give you a few minutes just to write up a few suggestions and answers and, and ideas, okay? But the idea is to look at these and think what competencies do you think are present in these two activities? Yeah, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe it's useful to go to think about the, the key competencies in case uh, our participants don't have them to hand. So competence in linguistic communication, multilingual competence, math, science and technology competence, digital competence, personal, social and learning to learn, citizenship, entrepreneurship, competence in cultural awareness and expression. So nice. any ideas? Yeah, nice. There's some nice comments coming in, wow. in the chat box mm -hmm. now. So we're talking a lot of linguistic competence. We've got personal and social is definitely in there. We've got uh, some STEM competencies there we can see maybe. Brilliant, lovely. Yeah, absolutely. So if we take a look at this first one, I think you, you sort of see that as language teachers, we can be pretty confident that the linguistic side of education, we know that we've got that mm -hmm. down. And that's our, to use a nice English expression, that's our bread and butter, isn't it? That is our everyday knowledge and, and practice. But not only that, we can also see there are some other ones. And that's popped up in the chat box right mm -hmm. uh, we can see for example that social learning and learning to learn yeah in, in this activity there are uh, do you have there's the process of talking of speaking of working of sharing your opinion your ideas you know and these are like on the screen you can see the link to the Lomloe competencies, but if you want to think about it in another way, you can also think about it in the sort of the our framework way, and that is there is also collaboration in there. There is specifically communication. You're managing a conversation. You're participating with confidence. 
Okay, we can look at that from our learners and think they are achieving this competence because they are demonstrating to me that they are confident and they're communicating with clarity. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not specifically I'm saying, oh, you used the past simple correctly. What we can say is, no, well, your message has been communicated. We've got the freedom to think about how they're actually performing in, in, in a linguistic sense. On the other side, we can also think about how they're collaborating, right? And I think it's important also that students are aware of the fact that we are not only focusing on the language, but there is another aspect, this collaboration, this um, work with, working with other people in a constructive way, with partners in a constructive way that is also very relevant and they are going to be also uh, assessed in that in that way or that this is an, a part of their learning as well yeah so we saw that in this first activity if we look at the second activity um what can we see in this one victoria well uh, because of the topic um the responsible online behavior clearly is digital competence we are going to be tapping into into that and also uh personal, social, and learning to learn, because we are talking about how to be um, responsible uh, in, a, in a social environment. Here is the, the online environment that is um, such an important part of our um, learners' life as well. Yeah, it's also a bit of etiquette as well. You're learning uh, online behavior, the etiquette behind it, which is also going to benefit you in, in other ways, you know. If we think about the productive side of things here, the learners are creating their own content from this. So they're actually developing a creative thinking, which we can uh, assimilate into entrepreneurship, uh, being creative and problem solving, mm -hmm. as well as the, the social responsibilities, as mentioned, uh, looking at uh, how they're behaving in a group or society. So I think from these two activities, the point to get across is that we're are looking at um, really two things here. We're looking at the skills that we're developing to use technology, for example, or use the language. And we're also looking at the concept behind the language, the, the behavior. And that's mm -hmm. another way to notice competencies. It's not always about the specific technical side. It's also about the sort of I don't want to say philosophical side, but it's the more the more yeah the knowledge side of things. Yeah, definitely, and I think that with these two tasks, we we've seen that they are really relevant to to students. So I think students are going to feel very engaged in these type of tasks because it's what they they usually do in in life. So lovely. So let's think about that then. We've just looked at noticing different opportunities for activities, but what different ways do you think, this is an open question for everybody in, in the session today, what different ways do you think you could adapt resources? Yeah. How might you choose to adapt a resource? Just think of any resource in your class and how you might try to integrate competencies into them. It's a very big question. It is. <laughs> it but we are doing it all the time as well. Whenever we are in class, we are we personalize the, the resources. We we never we, or sometimes we, we we can do it, but there is a, some tweaking as well and, and some adaptation to make it more relevant to our students. For sure. While people are putting Thinking their or yeah, putting typing their ideas at, down. <laughs> typing at the same time. Okay, there we go. Nice. So one example here is I try to offer mixed examples. I, when talking about people, I include pictures of a variety of, yeah, different races, shapes and ages. Yeah, we come in all shapes and sizes. This is what my grandparents used to tell me. <laughs> scaffolding as well, keep making sure that we're scaffolding activities. Nice. Okay, we'll jump ahead and look at a few examples then. So mm -hmm. here's an activity. 
And that, we'll give you a bit more structure here now, okay? So on the screen, you can see a typical language activity here. The idea, just for a bit of context, is uh, this is a story about mountain safety. It's about uh, what you should do in the mountains, okay? So looking at the activity and looking at the visuals, what type of activities could you do? Let's think if there is any collaborative activities you might want to do, a creative activity or a critical thinking activity. If you're interested in this resource, they do come from our World of Fun website. The QR code link is up there in the top corner. So just in the chat box, share with us if you have any ideas on a way that we could probably maybe make this activity a collaborative activity, a creative activity, or a critical thinking activity. Nice, yeah, making up a story. Create a story about the pictures. Love it, yeah. I think that was my first instinct as well, right? It was, <laughs> I don't know about you, Victoria. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> oh, there, Julia, uh, Julia Cecilia said, uh, making up the end of the comic. So coming up with an idea for the, for the final part of the story, what will happen next? Very nice. Good. Anyone got a critical thinking task there maybe? Nice. Yeah. So collaborative and creative together is like creating the story together. That's exactly the point. It's you can see that there's so many crossovers between competencies. Nice. Inventing superheroes. I like that. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Right. So uh, just a couple of examples. Uh, oh, just quickly what, before we go ahead, critical thinking is what would you do in this situation? That's it's a really lovely example because you're putting the learner in the position to think about it, you're getting them to put their, themselves in the character's shoes. Great. Great, loads of lovely ideas. So uh, one example of collaborative, exactly as, uh, as many of you mentioned, write a short story, fill out, maybe you can give them a graphic organizer or a story planner, and then each learner writes a part of the story. So we can get a group work and group story writing. Another one, might be to uh, ask them to write some questions about the story, you know, or we can get them some questions to answer about the story. And then from that information, they create a poster on being safe in the mountain. That can be a very nice idea for those students who are very visual and like to, to work with that visual element. Um, it's a nice way to combine them that and make it part of our lesson. And the final point, Victoria? Yeah, uh, we can ask them to add some dialogue, what is being said in each picture, and also put together a short role play of the story. That way we are combining and we are integrating a lot of different skills. Yeah, so it's all about trying to think of different ways to interact with the content. And, and it's about the different sort of production elements of a task. Here also you can see um the the idea of creating a poster i mean for those of you who have created or done poster activities in your classroom just as a sidestep that is a perfect example of a mediation task okay it's taking information summarizing it and then creating something to communicate the message to someone else okay that is a perfect example of what mediation is all about uh Another one on this, you have the final one is an example of an interaction, you know, uh, where they're working together, they're talking together. They are cooperating and they are, um, they also need to, to make decisions and, and then uh, to, to have the role play and to, to put together the, the role play. So what competencies are we working on here yeah so what competencies these are also we're looking at citizens excuse me citizenship competence we're looking at personal social learning and i'm also looking at the linguistic communication 
Uh, whenever we do an activity in English, we're really talking about plurilingual, multilingual competence, and we're also talking about linguistic communication. By nature, our subject is, is that, it's using language. So many of the times they'll be using their first language, they'll be asking questions about it. How do I say this in English? Or I want to say this, and that's a perfect way of encouraging that the sort of fluidity between languages. Just in the chat box, I just wanted to highlight that uh, uh, one, one comment was, I use different roles such as facilitator, reporter, uh, a recorder, a motivator, and it will work collaboratively. Roles are another fantastic way of being inclusive, which is another whole massive world of Lomloy. It's all about inclusive education, bringing everyone together. And if you want to add anything, Victoria. Yeah, no, uh, I love this idea of roles and maybe um, asking students to have different roles in different sessions uh, is also a, a way to help them work from different perspective and develop different skills as well. Nice. So again, it's it's all about thinking about the different, it's just being aware, isn't it, of the different competencies that we touch upon in very typical activities. So on that note, I've got a question for you. What type of activities or tasks do you do that can include various competencies? If you have any activities you particularly like to do, could you maybe link them to a competence somewhere? It can be either one of the key competencies or if you want to do one of the specific competencies, either or. And songs pops up, yeah, songs are a great one. role plays, theater. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any activity that requires uh, role playing um, is a nice way to integrate uh, a whole range of competencies, a whole range. Research projects. Yeah. We're going to be talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> web quests. Nice. Making Maybe. a short film. <laughs> I, I like that, yeah. Train up some future producers and directors. That'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? Exactly. So I see lots of lovely examples coming through in the chat box, such as research, such as projects, such as role plays and interviews and debates or all, all really nice ways and again they are very classic classroom activities the thing that we're going to be doing now is we now can apply more value to them instead of just as a production way to help learners learn like help them memorize and and get better with the language we can now reward them and understand uh, and and take that into account as well in their performance or in, in english so typically this is just a page in a book, okay? Uh, this page here is looking at life skills, okay? And we've put this on the screen just because it follows a really nice structure that we can apply throughout and, and a way that we can incorporate more competence-based learning into our, uh, into our classes. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything here, Victoria. Yeah, no, just I was just looking at the, the how it is guiding students through different stages with a bit of, of brainstorming at the beginning to get them uh, to activate their, their background knowledge and their vocabulary that they will later need to use for the other activities. It is a lovely progression um, to reach uh, like the, the final project. Well, that's it. It's, it's exactly that. I mean, the 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 flow, if you will, of the lesson is a very typical one that we'd be familiar with, right? That we activate, then we learn, we practice, and then we try to put it into action. And in this, this lesson in particular uh, is looking at a citizenship, it's social responsibility, right? It's looking at how we should look after our world, okay? But what it does very nicely is it ends on a project. 
Okay, and so this project, uh, as mentioned in the chat box, it was projects are a great way to incorporate a variety of different competencies. Now, projects not just for older learners, but also for younger learners, we can work on little projects as well, and, and, and really sort of encourage that collaborative and social learning spirit. Anyway, so well, in this life uh, skills section, it goes through, it activates, it introduces, and then it gets them to create something, the production side of learning. And in this case, it's a small presentation called Look After Our World. And it gives a few pointers and it gets them to write ideas and add pictures. Okay, so a nice little mini project and a nice way for us to think about how well they're performing. So this is the process, right, Victoria? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are going to start by completing a task, reviewing the answers, getting the students to discuss the topic in groups, share their ideas, and understanding any issues that may come up, and then get students to prepare a presentation, a poster, a blog, etc., which is exploring the, the solutions or actions that they can take. So this is an idea of how we can uh, present the project and introduce it. But there are also alternatives uh, because uh, we, we adapt our um, lessons to our students depending on their needs. And maybe we, we may be able to start by complete asking, asking them to complete the task, but we may decide that it is useful for them to brainstorm some possible ideas because this is going to help them um, to, to come up with um, ideas, also vocab, and is going to, to help maybe weaker students feel a bit more confident. So uh, it is beneficial really for, for all students. Then how can we um, adapt this activity a bit more and thinking about the interaction? Are we going to ask them to work individually? Do we think that they could benefit from working in pairs, in small groups, maybe brainstorming as a whole class activity? It depends on your situation, how big your groups are and really your students' needs. We may also decide that we want to um, provide them with extra support, for example, giving them useful expressions to discuss the topics. And also, um, we are also personalizing by giving them choice. We were thinking about preparing a presentation or a poster, a blog post, even a video. So this choice is going to um, make students feel a bit more responsible for their learning and more um, having a more active role in the, in the lesson. That's yeah, really nice. It's all about that, isn't it, Victoria? It's all about trying to uh, include everyone in the class and provide uh, different levels of interaction and different levels of um, attention, trying to find ways that we can encourage everyone to participate. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. So um, what can we do? We can look at... Uh, different ways to adapt material. I mean, this is just from our framework. For those of you who are interested on the Cambridge framework, we'll share with you a link to that in the chat box and uh, a bit later on. But this is just an example of the different competencies, the, the social responsibilities competence and different points that we look at, uh, sorry, different areas to focus on, different like can-do statements, if you will. Within them, there are three key things here. We've got citizenship, cultures, and global issues, three of those big pictures, you know, those big ideas. What we're going to do then is take a look at these three points, citizenship, cultures, and global issues, and we're going to think about how we can um, integrate them into uh sorry adapt them into other types of activities so the citizenship sorry citizenship for example okay so here we have a couple of tasks from our um, cambridge exams and here um how can we help our students be better prepared how can we help students with learning the way they look at 
we can see that they are uh, really like reading activities, use of English activities, but um, they are covering the topic of citizenship, as Mark mentioned. If we are thinking about specific competencies, reading, reception, uh, but also we can, uh, in the preparation stage, uh, we can introduce brainstorming. Have you ever gone, uh, have you ever been to a summer camp? What did you do? What was it like? Did you like the experience? That way uh, we are introducing speaking and we are also helping um, students. I think there was a, a comment in the chat box before about how they, they elicit information from their personal experience and this makes the, the lesson more relevant. So um, this is a way to, to tap into different um, competencies and also um, in the in the case of the open gap field, maybe we can adapt the activity. Uh, it is an, it's an open gap field, but we can turn it into a, a multiple choice task by thinking about the distractors, the, the options that are not correct and the key, the correct answer, and making the, and that way we are making the task a bit more inclusive because maybe for weaker students, if students are at the beginning of the, of the academic year, they will benefit from this approach, which is a bit less challenging than having the, the open gap field. Yeah, and, and other things we can do, as, as you mentioned, like skills integration and brainstorm. But another thing to think about is, for example, when we're doing a culture activity. So this is an example of a text, uh, which might be a more classic text, right? Um, thinking about, I don't know uh, how to say classic text. I mean, more of a, a more traditional reading gap field text. But we can take the concept. Like we said before, the concept is natural history. Well, what can we do with that? Well, why don't we then encourage our learners to go on a quest, a web quest, to discover information about the content? Uh, there are hundreds of wonderful websites, like the Natural History Museum is, is a lovely, lovely place to go and find beautiful resources. Or you also have uh, websites like Google have a culture app and a culture website that's really really lovely that's always updating every every month with new little exhibitions we can take just in this example we can take the concept and ask them then to go away and maybe set up their own natural history museum exhibit and you know, and what we're we doing there well we're integrating a whole load of different fun examples if we're in primary school for example uh, we can we'll be learning maybe in one of their classes they'll be learning about I think Egyptians pops up maybe or Egypt, uh, Egyptology a bit now looking at some of the pharaohs or or any concept really if they even if they're doing the the Spanish kings and queens you know um, we can take that and, and get them to do a bit of research on a natural history museum looking at that and then presenting and suggesting it in English and we can take advantage of other concepts and subjects and content and bring it into our realm and encourage them to integrate into interact with it and mediate through it. In, exactly. In, I was going to say that, that way you're mediating all the time. Mm -hmm. it, go on, Victoria. No, no, no. Uh, it was just what, what you mentioned, like asking them to maybe present it. Like, what would you would you be interested in looking at in the Natural History Museum? So select something and then present it to your students. That way they, they, they are selecting, extracting the relevant information and presenting it to their students, to their classmates. That is mediation. That is already tapping into mediation and of course integrating it with speaking, listening, because students will be listening. Um, follow-up questions can be can be also included so really there is a lot that you can do with an exam task taking that as a basis yeah and and just on the while we're on the moment of culture culture is going to be a really really great launching pad for uh the competencies because in your uh primary courses in primary material you'll often find literature pages and those literature pages are often linked to culture uh, some courses also have culture pages right but the literature page um you'll see things like um different um 
different uh, stories from around the world. And those moments are going to be great for us to launch off. In fact, in the webinar that's coming up next week, um, we'll be looking at three classic classroom lessons, uh, a CLIL, a, a literature, for example, and we're going to look at how we can integrate competencies into them or how we can extract competence-based learning out of it. Okay, so this first session, as, just to repeat while we're here, this first session is all about what it means to teach competencies, and we're going to go practical in the, in the next sessions, okay? Anyway, I get distracted, Victoria. Moving on, the final point uh, is just to mention is this the culture doesn't just have to be that. It could just be films, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we have a, a writing task, but again, we can turn it into a reading into writing if we have given students a, a short review or, or a little paragraph about a, a film, asking them, uh, what is the last film they saw, whether they liked it or not, whether they would recommend it or not, and why they, this is another way of mediating, okay? And um, also, this could be maybe like the pre-stage um, to, the, to the writing, and then the post could be like a reflection activity. We know that self-assessment, we've mentioned before, that self-assessment reflection is very important as well in the Lom Loe. So um, adapting your assessment criteria um, and making sure that um, they are something that students can really understand, that can fully understand, and then asking them very short questions, very direct questions. Have you written about all the content points, for example? Yes, no giving examples, asking them to reflect and then make improvements. This drafting of, um, of the writing process is going to be bene very beneficial and it's going to also uh, make them have a more active role in, in their learning rather than just giving them the, the piece of writing with, with a mark or something like that. No, uh, putting their responsibility in them and in their hands and asking them to reflect and maybe suggest how they've done. Yeah, exactly. Uh, our final one just to look at are global issues. Also, you'll see many, many topics throughout. I mean, we're just here. These activities are secondary age activities, but they are very much present in primary uh, books and even infantile books as well. Planting trees, for example, or nature and the environment is always there. It's all about looking for those moments, looking for those opportunities and thinking where we could take this further. Another one here is, is a young inventor. So just again, the same concept, these two topics, we could do a hundred different activities. It's all about thinking, what do I want to do? What do I, what will my kids like to do? Mm -hmm. First, what would I like to do? And then how are the competencies related to this? What competencies could I focus on? And then you can, like we said before, you can turn them up, turn them down, focus more on one, focus less on the other. Just feel out what makes sense. The only thing is, remember, we have to have a profile for our learners that they have to have done all of the competencies and they have specific targets to get to by the end of the year. Just balancing it out, finding moments to evaluate and assess. And I'm thinking, Mark, that maybe if, um uh, make, trying to make students more aware of what they are learning maybe we can have the competencies of the wall on the wall in a very visual way something that they can understand and then what competency ex, com, what competencies sorry how do you think we have covered in, in class and why that way that we are also um, integrating that into their reflection stage and and students have also a visibility of how much they are progressing and what aspects are being covered. Yeah, and another thing we can do is if you are making a visual, why don't you or, or why don't in our classes we allow the learners to decide what competence they want to work on? Maybe you have some child says that I'm feeling very collaborative today. I want to be evaluated on my collaboration. Another one saying, well, I'm feeling less talkative, so I wouldn't like to be evaluated on my linguistic competence today. You know, giving them a bit more uh, freedom to self-evaluate the competence they feel most comfortable with. Or if they're doing an activity and they think, well, oh, this went really well, 
I think I worked really well in a group. I'm going to self-evaluate on my collaborative side of things. You know, there's this, it's a very flexible. It, it's not a rigid, you have to achieve this, you have to do this. There, there is a lot of room for, for manoeuvre. And to that point, should we have a look at, so what we've been looking at before is all about planning, setting up, thinking about the classes, how are we working, uh, what are we working with? Whereas now we're going to take a, a bit of time to look at the actual in-class reality and a few ways that we can start to incorporate competencies throughout our actual teaching. And we're going to do that through scaffolding, right, Victoria? Yeah, exactly. I was going to say that we have already been given some ideas about how we can be scaffolding learning for, for all learners. We are going to go into more detail now. And... Again, uh, we've already tapped into self-assessment, but more to come. Nice. So we have a question for you. First and foremost, what is scaffolding? So if you could, in the chat box, write at least two opinions on what scaffolding is. So if you just take a second to write in the chat box at least two opinions on what scaffolding is. I'll give you a few seconds to write up some answers. I'm appreciating the collaborative nature of this group. Eh? They're very nice with the comments and sharing ideas. Support, building knowledge, starting with the basic content. Nice. Create your own learning using previous knowledge, little steps in the learning process. Nice. Like that. <laughs> Scaffolding is giving opportunities to all students. Yeah. Nice. Good. Oh, that's very metaphoric. I like that. Like layers in a cake. I'm, I'm feeling that one. Nice, good, so yeah, absolutely loads of wonderful, wonderful suggestions. 100%, um, I agree with them all. Uh, how are you, Victoria? Definitely, yeah, very, very nice way to, to explain what scaffolding is, really. It's lovely, but what we've done here is we've been a bit sneaky because we've shown an activity and a way of being inclusive and scaffolding for all learners. What have we done on screen? Well, we've not only asked you the question okay we've presented it but we've given you a visual so you can see we've given you a written so you can read and we've also given you a spoken so you can hear okay we're introducing activities in a way that it's more accessible for more people okay and that is also a skill that we as teachers can help our learners develop we can help them support each other there's there's different ways for them to interact with each other by, by knowing what they have to do, right? It's, it's about creating that environment where everybody can participate, you know, at the, at the fundamental level. If not all learners can participate, what's going to happen? Well, we run the risk of distracted learners. We run the risk of learners not learning what they need to learn in the moment. Um, we learn, run the risk of learners distracting other learners as well. So these little steps, but... More on that, what we've also done here is include a wording that allows everybody to participate. You know, we've said at least. That's the minimum standard, okay? And if you say this, at least, I guarantee you 99% of the class are going to do two because it's the minimum. <laughs> no, right? But that's not a bad thing. What that means is everybody's contributed. OK, then we can go around the class and say, Vicky, come on, you can do better than that. Give me another one. Or Maria, this is great. I think you've got two more suggestions in you. And we can then build confidence to go further, you know, and that is about the environment. You know, that is about creating an inclusive environment. You know, we're encouraging all learners to participate, be social, work together, support each other. 
anything to add there, Victoria? No, definitely that um, by by combining all these um, ways uh, of um, giving support, uh, giving the instructions, we we can at least try to make sure that we everyone is is covered at least fingers yeah. crossed yeah. we we often talk about scaffold low and remove the roof this is kind of a little mantra almost that we have right victoria that it's all about creating an entry level that's really low level that everybody can participate but not limiting the stronger learners who want to go further exactly make them in the chat box there's a comment here may saying make them realize that they are able to do starting from the basic you know, it's, it's fundamental. Do the basics and we can go further. So what have we looked at here in this little section? We, we've been looking at how um, there, is a, a, there are different ways in which a teacher can anticipate and respond to, to a variety of students' needs in the classroom. We are aware of our students' needs. We are observing all the time. And uh, based on, the, on that, we can then modify the content we've looked at that uh, when we were looking at the the um, exam tasks for example the process when we were looking at the the project and also the product right with giving students choice right whether they want to produce a, a poster or a blog or a video so um this is how we are catering right uh, for different needs yeah, and what we're doing here is kind of also trying to get the message across that when we're talking about Lom Loi and we're talking about competencies and we're talking about uh, adapting our teaching styles, it doesn't have to be all about content. It doesn't have to be, I'm going to give specific worksheets. We can also think about our technical teaching, our pedagogy. We can think about the way we present tasks, the, the final product that we want the learners to do. We can do so much more and it gives us as teachers a lot of freedom so the final point that we're going to look at today is about self-assessment so on the screen you can see a classic primary task okay this is a little mission project this is from one of our courses called life adventures in this activity they have to create a restaurant so they're going to choose a name they're going to prepare a sign and in groups they're going to talk about their restaurant okay so we assume our learners have gone ahead they've had fun he he ha ha my restaurant's got a, a great name uh whatever it might be then we want to sort of think about well they've done this task but what competencies of have they worked on so just quickly We'd like you to say what competencies you think the learners have worked on here. Um, <laughs> I like that all of them. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> that's really, really good. They really have, to be honest with you. Anyone else want to highlight any specific ones there? Creative thinking. Yeah, all of them. A lot. Creative collaboration. A hundred percent. They've worked on everything. They've they depending on you as a teacher on your moment in that class we can turn the volume up or turn the volume down on them depending on what we feel like we can say well actually this is a lovely task i'm going to focus this moment on their creative and critical thinking and their collaboration is not so important for me okay and we can focus in and say how well they've done on this side of things in this task Okay, always try to encourage, let them know what we're working on as well. Nice, so we said all of them. Uh, on the screen, you can see this is from our framework. So these are the competencies. And underneath, you have all of the can-do statements. Now, if we look at this, we could pick, choose some of them that we feel that are more specific. We've highlighted a few for you already, just that we think that are really sort of linked really well to this activity. Okay, and... And what can we do from here? Well, we know that we're going to evaluate them on these. This is from us. This is our evaluation. But what we want to do is to encourage them to evaluate. Right, Victoria? Yeah. And how are we going to do this? Because uh, this can work with maybe students at, at a certain level. But what about students who are uh, younger and have a, a lower level? How can, we, how can they understand what we mean by 
creative thinking and communication and learning to learn and managing conversations. What, what, how can we explain that? Yeah, how can we explain that? So for example, here, uh, we highlighted one just for reference that there was completely at random, but the idea is um, in the framework, in our framework documents, you'll have not only the can-do statement, but also examples of the types of things that they should be doing in the class to achieve this competence, okay? So here we have three, and what we can do with these, if we want to create some reflective questions, is why don't we modify them to reflective questions? <laughs> what I mean is, why don't we then change it and ask the children to answer that? So they answer how well they feel they did. Can they demonstrate? So the first one is encouraging other children, or encourages other children, we can ask them, how did you encourage your teammates? No? Mm -hmm. The next one, Victoria? What ideas about your restaurant did you share? And the final one there is, is what improvements to the other restaurants did you suggest? So the idea is great that we decide and we evaluate and we have the criteria saying, okay, you did well this, you did this better, I'll give you your X points or whatever your mark is. But what we also want to be doing is putting it into their hands and we take that opinion back. And we also include that in a bit of the self-evaluation, the formative evaluation. And I think, Mark, that this can also increase um, students' confidence because um, some students may feel a bit less confident. And, uh, you know, if you gave them a traffic light, like red, yellow, green, how do you think you did in this task? Maybe because, uh, I don't know, maybe they, they are a bit more, they are shy and they, they find it difficult to, to talk to other partners. They may feel that they didn't do that well. But when, when you are then when you are asking them these questions and they can find examples of what they've done well, it's going to help them gain confidence and see, okay, I can do this. And uh, there is always something positive that we can extract and of course a direction to go to continue improving as well. So um, I think it's also important to mention that they don't need to do everything well. We don't expect them to do everything well. There will be some aspects in which they are, they are, they are stronger at, and then some aspects that they will need to continue working on. Mm -hmm. And it's all about that mentality, isn't it, of encouraging them to have a growth mindset, to think about how they can improve. It's not that the can't improve it's just they're not at the level yet right mm -hmm. this is a self-evaluation but as we've spoken about and we mentioned before we have more webinars coming up over the next weeks okay um but before before we we go this is sort of where we're sort of leaving you today um what have we done today well we've looked at the key points haven't we we looked at competencies we've looked at them in planning and we've also looked at them while teaching Okay, the summary in question. So I don't know if there's any questions anyone wants to ask right now. We've got a few minutes just for questions. For those of you who are also waiting for the certificate, we've got a couple more slides just for uh, the feedback form. And once you've completed the feedback form and, and left, you'll be able to, to get your certificate. Okay, if there's any questions in the chat box. While the questions are coming in, I'll just bring this slide up and let you know that over the next couple of weeks, we have uh, next week, next Thursday, same time, we have a practical Lomloy session. That's where we're going to be looking at different activities and tasks that we can do in the classroom. As I mentioned, thinking about literature, clear and culture lessons that are in our course books and how we can take advantage of them. Then the following week uh, on the 18th, we have on Thursday the 18th, we also have a session, our first session on mediation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one is going to be an introduction to, to mediation, just reflecting on the fact that we already work on mediation and it's going to focus a bit more on, on primary, right, Mark? Exactly, yeah. So the first one, we're looking more about primary. So for our primary teachers out there, there's going to be activity ideas and suggestions for the primary level. Then after uh, Christmas, we'll be looking at the secondary level learners, thinking about how we can do tasks for them. 
Excellent. So one more final thing. Please, please, please give us your feedback. Uh, there's a nice um, uh, little questionnaire, little um, feedback form. It'll take you five seconds, really, for a couple of minutes to fill out. Please suggest to us. We have open spaces to create more webinars for you. Okay, so the content, the topics you want to look at, you want to see, let us know. If you want your certificates, you find them here. Uh, and that's about that. And if you've got any final words you'd like to say, Victoria. No, just please uh, share your, your feedback. Let us know what is useful for you, what you're missing. And so we can make the, the sessions as, in, as informative and as useful as possible for your context. Wonderful. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, get in touch. Um, and we'll share our emails in a second. But for the moment, thank you, everybody. Uh, all the best. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>